Wow. All right. Not sure what to say about that one. Thank you, Ann. Deb is back now. Uh, they changed American history with innovations that left a permanent imprint on society. And Deb is back to tell us about a unique exhibit in KC highlighting African American inventors. Yeah, uh, Justin, I have a quick question for you. Did you ever play with the Super Soaker water gun growing up? I, <laughs> I think did. that's actually you uh, right there. You know, Super Soakers, the garden hose, whatever I could find. Right. Well, interesting fact a black engineer by the name of Lonnie Johnson actually invented that. Here he is right there, and I was actually blown away by that fact. Now, there are a lot of African-American inventors out there who may not have household names, but have pretty famous products. Let's take a look at this. 100 exhibits. Uh, I think it's a great experience for all the ages that are here. Line the floor of the American Jazz Museum. Our exhibit starts with ancient African culture and works up to the present day with the to the gentleman named Jesse Russell. Russell's the reason we can talk on cell phones. And he developed the formula that makes it possible for all these cell phone towers that you see around the country to be built. And builders like him, all black inventors have made some pretty hefty contributions to the industry. I'm glad that many things were invented by African Americans. We can thank Emmett McHenry for making room for Facebook, Twitter, even Google. But he's the guy who invented dot .com, dot .edu, dot .gov, uh, dot .net. McHenry didn't get a patent and his efforts are widely unknown. There are people who still are given full credit for things that maybe they shouldn't get full credit for. Like Lewis H. Latimer, Thomas Edison is known for inventing the light bulb, but Latimer made it stay bright and stay on. And he's the guy who invented and got the patent for the filament that Edison eventually used. The exhibit is only up for one day. It started 15 years ago and Lamb hopes to rebuild it after relocating to the Midwest. Now, uh, that was actually at the American Jazz Museum near 18th and Vine. Now, I have ties to one of those inventors. Here he is, Louis Lattimore. It is actually my great, great, great grandfather. Unfortunately, Justin, I didn't get those, uh, those, those <laughs> genius genes. I was going to say, now his great, great, great granddaughter is on the Now KC. That's an even bigger hey, deal, I Hey, that is say. awesome, especially because I get to work with you and Wayne and everybody else. There you mm -hmm. go. There you go. Good story. Some cool uh, fun facts Thank there. you, Justin. Thank you, Doug. Hello and welcome back to my office where today, instead of talking about the latest nanotech doohickey or awesome, fantastic, newly discovered exoplanet, I want to spend a few moments of Black History Month talking about some of the freaking amazing things that were invented by African American scientists. Things that have made my life way more awesome and probably your life too, though who are we kidding? I don't care about you. Let's start with this thing. Right here. This. And this. And this. And let's not forget this. For all these things, we have to thank physicist James West, who in the 1960s revolutionized everything from hearing aids to rock and roll by inventing the electret microphone. Before James West came along, microphones were really weak, and they had to be hooked up to an external power source, which made them not super useful in a lot of applications. So while he was working at Bell Labs, he discovered that by implanting a microphone with an electret, which is a substance like Teflon that retains a static charge, it would not only pick up a broader range of sounds, it also didn't need a power source. Today, about 90% of microphones, including in your phone and in your laptop and basically anything else you talk into, use James West's technology. Now about that computer that you have, out of all of the patentable inventions in IBM's original personal computer, a third of those patents are still held by Mark Dean. Dean is an electrical engineer without whose work I shudder to think of what my life would be like. In the early 1980s, Dean led the team that came up with the interior architecture that all PCs would use to communicate with other devices like printers and modems and other computers. Basically, the architecture that made computers worth using. Technology's changed a lot since then, of course, but the system that Dean developed, called the ISA Systems Bus, still used in a lot of industrial and military computers. Dean continued research to make computers smaller and faster and more badass, and in 1998, he led the team that came up with the first chip capable of doing a billion calculations per second. And he still works at IBM, where he's one of the senior vice presidents. So now we've got microphones for making videos, computers for like all the other work that I do. What else is there real? Oh, right. Uh, there's video games. Gamers everywhere should probably have a picture of Jerry Lawson taped their console because 
He's our patron saint. In the 1970s, Lawson was head engineer at a company called Fairfield Semiconductor, which is a pretty big semiconductor company. And while he was there, he developed the very first video game console. Back then, video games were pretty much exclusively either like big stand-up things that you played at the arcade, or like one game that you took home and plugged into your TV and it just had the one game in it. Lawson thought that it was kind of dumb to have the hardware and the software bundled together and not be able to use the hardware for other games that could perfectly easily use the same game. So he came up with a system of cartridges. Each of the cartridges had codes for different games on them, and he also developed a console that you could plug the cartridges into and then play a variety of games that you could then buy independently, which is great for the video game company. Basically, the dude invented console gaming. His device was released in 1976 as the Fairchild Channel F, a year before Atari's first console. And you know, you've never heard of the Channel F, so it's obvious that it didn't exactly take off. But his ideas did become industry standard. Soon after, Lawson left Fairchild to start his own video game company called Videosoft, which made software for the Atari 2600. And the rest is history. Lawson died in 2011, but the next time I fire up Assassin's Creed, I'm totally gonna Tebow in his honor. We'll see you here next Wednesday with more SciShow Breaking. If you have any questions or ideas for what we should cover, please leave them in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter. Shalom, shalom. This is Apostle I.O. from One Nation, One Power. I'm doing this short little lesson right here because I'm sick and tired of people asking me or trying to debate with me who the smartest people in the world are. I got a friend that was trying to debate with me about who the smartest people in the world are. Now, showing up these little bit of clips, who you think the smartest people in the world are? I got a Chinese friend try to tell me they were. I got a Jewish friend try to tell me they were. So I just simply gave them the facts that break the non-believers' backs. Hello. The same people who was ruling the world before Columbus came, who they was calling Incas and, oh, the Inca Maya, the great civilizations. These same descendants of these people are still making the inventions that still ruling the world ain't nothing changed ain't nothing changed so according to these facts that break the non-believers backs who do you think are the smartest people on planet earth lift your head up i told you i told you i told you we are the people of the book we are the people of the book. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you. The ability to create 
We carry that. No other nation does. Why I didn't see no Japanese in these inventions? Why I didn't see no Chinese in these inventions? Why I didn't see none of my Jewish brethren in these inventions? Because everybody making money off of us. Everybody on the planet is making money off of us. And these people got the audacity to lift their nose up at you when you walk down the street. They holding the cell phone in their hands that your ancestors created. They driving a vehicle that your ancestors created the motor. I hope you see what's actually going on on this planet. Hello, hear me talking. We dealing with some psychomaniacs. They know your ancestors are the true inventors of everything they're using on the planet. But then they make movies to make you look like the dumbest people on the planet. When in reality, you the smartest people on the planet. And you're not African Americans. You're Hebrew Israelites. Now can you see why our society when we had it was the highest on the earth? Now can you see when we was a nation why we was number one on planet earth? I pray that this short little video maybe uplift some Hebrew Israelite out there and cause you to get your nose out the dirt and lift your head up. Deuteronomy chapter 7 Verse 6 and 7. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thy Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all of the people on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 and 7. Hear me talking. You are the people of the book. Shalom.